the Prison City Podcast. When the bars go up, you're officially locked in. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Prison City Podcast. We've got a big episode here for you today. Um, a lot of stuff going on in Afghanistan and overseas and whatnot. Um, we got a uh, corporal that's going to come on as a special guest here today and, and discuss some of those things. Um, we got uh, Mahomes is back from his, uh, his uh, one-week disappearance from last week. It was just... Uh, we had a lot of stuff going on last week. Just had to push that one in there. And unfortunately, I know he really wanted to talk about those conspiracy theories he went over. So unfortunately, he was not able to talk about them last week. Um, but yeah, uh, we got a big explosive show here. This is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be really open. And we're just going to have a lot of fun here today. So I'm just going around a panel here. And uh, Matt, uh, Matt, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah. Hello um, and welcome, Fidel. I'm Matt Cutler. Um, these are my brothers, Pat and Kelly, and well, we're all from Deer Lodge, I think, as you know that. And I just want to say thank you for your service, and thank you for uh, being on tonight. And it's, um, I think it's my first podcast with someone I don't, have never met personally or don't know, which is pretty cool. Everyone else, you can kind of expose their secrets, but <laughs> with someone new, I'm, I'm excited to hear your uh, take on all these subjects because you're a friend of Mike's I know Mike has a lot of good things and interesting things to say so so I'm positive you're a good guy and I can't wait to hear uh, your take on some of these things so let's uh, round up them horses Pat get it over with early let's run that wagon <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah I forgot to introduce myself my name's Patrick W. Cutler I am the unofficial host of this uh, podcast here and I kind of produce things about the technology and whatnot um so yeah now we'll go over to uh Kelly here Yes, yes, everyone, welcome. Usually this is the point where I get cut off, um, so let me know when the internet goes out, and that's the end of my opening intro there. Uh, I just want to say 24 podcasts, holy fucking shit, just wanted to get a couple cuss words in there so our guest knows it's okay to cuss. <laughs> All right, and Mahones, is it okay to cuss? <laughs> uh, it is actually not. This is a family-friendly podcast. I'm not sure oh, what um, Mike told you about. Um <laughs> But this, this is, we gear this podcast towards like seven, eight year old kids <laughs> most of the time. And that's kind of our demographic. And I got to tell you, we're killing it. We probably have like three or four, seven or eight year olds that listen right now. And that's, that's a pretty big chunk of the market specifically in Deer Lodge. Um, but seriously, no, thank you for your service. Thank you for doing what you do and allowing me to be a dumbass here and not have to worry about anything. <laughs> I think a lot of people take that for granted and I certainly don't. Uh, definitely. Thanks, Mahomes. And then we're going to go. We got Mike Freeze back here, and he's going to kind of help uh, introduce Corporal Fidel here for the show. So, uh, Mike Freeze, what do you got to say for yourself? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me back again. Uh, yeah, this is, I, I got to be getting close to uh, like your most frequent guest now, right? I think I'm, you I'm are. On I'm, I'm on my <laughs> you way. You got it. <laughs> You easily know. got it because i know don don bromley likes to sneak in there sometimes too oh yeah <laughs> but yeah uh thanks for having um having me back and having uh fidel on uh fidel married my cousin uh megan and i'm very very close to my cousin we were we have the same birthday so uh we're 20 years apart um so yeah like uh you know Fidel is a few years older than, than Megan. And, uh, you know, I'm almost old enough to be his father. Right. And, but just being around Fidel, um, he's, he's the kind of person that like raises everybody's game, like around him. And, you know, like me, he like, I'm a, I'm a fucking fat ass right now. You know, I'm trying to lose a lot of weight and Fidel was just here, uh, like a week and a half ago and he made me go to the gym and, you know, I was like really sweating it a lot. I was like, man, I, I don't want to go to a, to the gym with a fucking Marine. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I kept telling him like, Hey man, like, you know, I'm not, I don't want to max out or anything. Right. Like, like I haven't worked out in a few years and, you know, and, uh, but no, I mean, it's just, you know, I remember years ago just doing some, some film work with military people and, and um, yeah, you know, we're always in debt to to you guys and thank you for your service and um and yeah man just just you know all of us have a ton of questions i'm sure so 
yeah, I can't, can't wait to talk to you in, in front of my, uh, some of my, my favorite people here. Awesome. Thanks for that, Mike. And now I'm going to use uh, Corporal Fidel here. And I'll just ask you, go ahead and just give your own intro, your own background. Just kind of tell everybody who you are here. How's it going, gentlemen? Hey, uh, well, officially, I just want to say thank you guys, and especially you, Patrick, to having me, to have the ability to be come on, on the show. Um, and I really appreciate your guys' support. Uh, but yeah, just to kick it off, my name is uh, Fidel Munoz. Uh, I recently got out of the United States Marine Corps around November of last year. Uh, so I did four years in the infantry. Uh, it was a hell of a time. I served in 2nd Battalion, 4th Marines. Fucking go bastards. Um, yeah, and I'm really excited to talk about Afghanistan and really excited to meet you guys and just go to hang out and shoot the shit. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. So I'm not going to go controversial right at the bat. But from your perspective, <laughs> would you say there is ever really a, a complete military coup to overturn the 2020 election results <laughs> and rightfully give it to Trump? Uh, <laughs> Well, do you mean like as in the military taking in control of the whole the country with that? What do you mean by that? Yeah, I was, I was reading this article online right after the results happened, and they're talking about what would have to happen for like a civil war to break out, and they're talking about um, the military would have to be split. Do you ever get a vibe from that, or or do you think that would ever happen in the near future, or anything like that over politics? Yeah, so from everything I viewed in the Marine Corps, I mean, all the way from the past were – fucking Kim Jong-un's bitch ass. They were, we were uh, gonna have World War III and everybody thought that was gonna happen three three years ago. Um, it all comes with the reality of the government and more specifically the military is for the people. And you think of any Marine, sailor, soldier, airman, they are all following orders. So in my honest opinion, I really don't think we could do that by ourselves because the structure itself is to a point to where everything's like really strict. Um, so yeah, we are a thinking capable mindset that can take out any fucking country in the world, but to an extent of we would do, really wouldn't do anything against our own citizens because we have rules that we follow. Um, but I mean, is it possible? Yes and no, because I mean, you think about all the way to 1775, 76, and I mean, bunch of fucking angry Americans. We got our own country, you know. Um, but yeah, I yes and no because we're supposed to be for the people, and having that to kind of go into chaos, it would kind of split up all these military branches, and uh, it would be like a huge. Uh, can't think. Of, can't think of the word right now, but it would be chaos. What if? Yeah. What if? I guess my uh, uh, go a little bit deeper on it, like. What I went, why I wonder what level of the military, like what generals or whatever, would have to do that. Like, what if the president said one thing or whatever, but then the generals like, no, we're doing our own way. Like, I wonder what that would look like. Could you possibly imagine, like, what the step ladder is to that or the the chain of command? So I know basically when you sign your life away with whatever contract you start, uh, it's usually a minimum of four years. You're swearing to protect the Constitution and the people that abide by that, and that's the American citizens. So having that whole ideology in itself, if you were to take that apart and say, hey, the army's generals are gonna be in charge of the army, we're gonna pull them out and they're gonna do whatever the hell they want. Um, I think, ask, ask the question one more time so, I, so I'm not getting off track. I, 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 I guess I guess I would say, um, and, and I, I briefly looked at this. This is like a while. Like this is like on a, um, it was like the New York Times or something where they, they weren't saying it was going to yeah. happen, but they were like, they're saying, well, what if, if a civil war was possible, how would it happen? So it went through at some point, um, they talked about the military like splitting. So it's like, well, how would that even like occur? Would some top generals or who, who would split or how would that even like, and would like someone like in your position, would you like, feel a loyalty to this guy or that guy or is it your loyalty always going to go straight up to the very top well it would be interesting i mean if we talk hypothetically the way the marine corps works is the president has complete control over the marines um so he just has to give an order and because he's the commander-in-chief we have to obey him i mean if he wanted to we could have us go attack fucking vietnam with all the marine corps forces and he has 30 days to use this 
for as long as he needs and whatever he wants to do. And by law, we technically have to obey. And then from there, he has to write a letter to Congress on why we should stay longer. But in that case, if that were to happen, I mean, you talk about impeachment, and I'm pretty sure we're going to get into that later with uh, Commander-in-Chief right now. But if I say if that were to happen in America, it would be a lot of chaos because martial law would pretty much come into effect. And with martial law coming into place, it would kind of be the government against the people. Mm -hmm. And then you would have all these different groups that would come out. And I guess Antifa would be one of them that would start to linger into a bigger mob. Yeah. So, Mahomes, what are your thoughts on this so far? Um, I actually, I'm going to, like, whenever you start talking your conspiracy bullshit, I'm just going to completely, like, go a different (laughs) route. Um, But it's actually not... It's not too different. And I think you kind of answered it. I've just always been curious if like when when you're in it, right, and you're in it with everybody else and the commander in chief, the president is is not there. Do you really like do you think of them or do you like when you're in it, do you really give a shit who the president is or you just you're in it with who you're in it with and you have your the chain of command and you're really only worried about the people that are actually you know, boots on the ground with you. In all reality, um, whenever it comes to missions and orders, it is always going to be to the brothers that left and right of you. And you guys kind of always have the understanding that you guys are going to do it to protect each other, whether the orders are bullshit. Um, but the way the UCMJ works, the Uniform Code of Military Justice is you are supposed to obey orders that are just. And if they seem unjust, then you can pretty much... I believe stand the court martial for it if you believe they're not um or you could just disobey the orders and then you go from there you uh, just add on to what Mahomes say when he talked about do you give a shit whether who the president is or not is there do you ever feel like there's a uh uh people like that you you served with that there is any type of political divide on anybody winning or losing an election like people are really mad one way or the other or how do you how do you feel about or how was that so I would say with whenever it comes to whoever the chief come, whenever the ch- a new chief comes in the chart for the military, it's kind of how is it going to affect our troops? And, as, and to an extent of, I could have my brother left and right, and one could be a diehard Republican and one could be a diehard Democrat. And we, it, the way the brotherhood works is you kind of have this common respect that I understand your beliefs and I'll let you believe them. And I understand your beliefs and I'll let you believe them. And we will never butt heads because we know there's nothing we can fucking do about it. Mm-hmm. You just follow orders and then do as you're told and enjoy the time with the brothers. But uh, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. yeah, And and, and what that means too, Pat, is, um, you know, if you were to ever join the Marines, the don't ask, don't tell is uh, you know, <laughs> good for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kelly, you want to weigh in? G rated. Yeah, Mike, keep it G rated, you motherfucking cocksucker. <laughs> hey. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you know what? I was going to um, ask a political, you know, how politics fall in the military, but Pat kind of uh, hit on that. So I don't know. Um, I'm interested. I'm, I'm interested in just basically listening to this episode. Interesting stuff. And we can jump into. Afghanistan if you want because I know very little about that you know just happened last week or whatnot and I kind of am really really interested in what the fuck your take is on that and what is going on and I'm sure everybody listening is like what is going on because there's about 50,000 different opinions and scenarios floating around out there so just before we before we do that I'm just more curious about like you as a person and specifically like what made you enlist right because we obviously this stuff was going on so you knew you were probably going to see some sort of action so like what was how did that go like what was your thought process and finally made you do like yeah i'm i'm doing this shit yeah so um when i was around i think 16 or 17 in high school i was a lot more towards my faith because when you're young you're easily easily influenced um I had like a real calling, like a, like a patriotic calling. And I felt like God in my own sense, because I'm a Christian, I felt him calling me to the military. And with the way it worked with my family was 
we didn't join the military, you know. I had uh, a great grandfather and a couple uncles that served um, Vietnam, uh, Fallujah, all, all this crazy stuff. And I wasn't really close contact with them. So, I mean, becoming a grown ass man, my dad just came to me one day and he said, hey, what are you going to do in your life? Because time's ticking. You're going to have to get the hell out of my house. You're going you're gonna to work or what? So I actually was praying about it and I just kind of felt like, the Air Force, and I, it, was, it was pretty weird, you know, the Chair Force. I'm like, what? And I didn't really understand anything of the military at the time, so I went to go talk to an Air Force recruiter, and I walked in, and nobody was in there. And I was like, what the hell? Because uh, I was trying, I was doing research because I wanted to do SF, so Special Forces, because I wanted to be a pararescueman. And those guys are like, it's like two years of training before you even be call yourself a PJ. Um, so when I came in there and nobody was in there and uh, I walked out and I saw a Marine recruiter and he's like, hey, man, and like, was he in there? And I was like, no. So uh, I actually went inside the office and uh, I asked him a couple of questions, how it works, how it's getting paid worked, uh, what are the requirements? He had me take the ASVAB and we just went from there. Um, and I actually told my parents, I was like, hey, I'm joining the Marines. And my mom was flipping out. My dad was like, no, there's no way you're going to die, blah, 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 blah. Like, you can't do that. And then I was really confused at this uh, time in my life because I respect nobody, in a sense, more than my own father. So I was really confused, you know. I was like, oh, dad, you told me, like, I got to get the hell out of here. And I really want to do something with my life. I don't want to just fucking flip burgers for a living, you know. And college just doesn't sound too fun for me right now. Uh, so... Uh, a little bit of time went by and he said, Hey, you know what, son, you're a grown ass man. I'll, you make your own decision. Just uh, don't come crying back when you want to come home. And I was like, well, fuck that. I'm not coming back home. So I went to maps. I got the process done and I went in as an open contract in the infantry because I wanted to do infantry. I wanted to do something where I was getting hands on. I know it was definitely serving my country and I wasn't just fucking typing on a computer. So about, Two weeks later, and this is like actually record timing because it doesn't happen. I I think I'm fucking sitting down playing a video game. And I get a call from my recruiter and he's like, hey man, like you ready to go to boot camp? And I was like, what the fuck? So I'm like, yeah, dude, yeah, I'm ready. He's like, he's like, be ready in 20 minutes. So I run upstairs, like, hey dad, mom. And my dad was asleep because he just got home from work. I was like, I'm leaving, man. And it was pretty surreal for them. And uh they dropped me off with my ID and 20 bucks in my pocket and they gave me my folder and I was in, they took me to Sacramento and then I flew to San Diego MCRD, the Marine Corps Recruit Depot and the rest was history, man. Um, so how was a uh, boot camp? I want to say like physically toughness, because I know uh, some of us on here have played college football and went through winter conditioning and all that shit. So like physically when you first got there, just going off your, uh, Mahoney's question. Um, how was that physically when you first got there? Did that scare you away or were you just like totally into it? No, actually, uh, I was always kind of like a fitness freak. Um, oh. So in my honest opinion, the, the, the recruiting office really set us up for success because they would like slay us. We'd be running with ammo cans a couple miles. Um, when you get to boot camp, it's, it's more, it, it's physical. It really is. But it's more of a mental game on how long you can do it because you technically will only fail if you give up on yourself. Uh, we would, after lunch, we would do a max set of pull-ups and if the drill instructor wasn't happy, you'd do it. Uh, four times a week, you would be doing uh, PT and that'd be like three miles a day, ammo can lifts, pull-ups, uh, just getting blasted. And I guess this is shark attacks or whatever, where they're just drilling you and um, getting on your face, making you push-ups, sit-ups, crunches. Uh, all that kind of stuff but yeah I mean physically it was I don't know because to each their own because some guys go in and then they're just passing through it um and the ones that are like passing through it they really try to break you but you have a lot of guys that are just thinking they're going to go in fat as fuck and they're just going to fly by and those are the ones <laughs> that get weeded out and it's like next week you see them in their civilian clothes and they're fucking going back home because they could make it um, but it, it's you're the, you become bread you know the, if the drill instructors really don't like you they'll, they'll make sure you're getting out of the fucking marine corps they don't want you in i got i i do actually have a question now that i'm thinking about it uh what is your consensus on 
what is your opinion on, on um, America right now, the United States? Are we standing on solid legs still? Because so many people think this country's more fucked up than it's ever been with the politics, the COVID, the splits, the race wars, everything. Are we still standing on solid legs with like the structure is there, we got nothing to worry about, or do we have something to worry about right now? In your so opinion? in my honest opinion, um, I see America right now as a, a family that's constantly fighting, but at the end of the day, we still love each other. You think of the craziest families, that's the dad's an alcoholic, the mom, fucking addicted to drugs or something and the children are always ditching school left and right um and then everybody comes to the reality of like hey we're still a family we need to work this out um i would say america's kind of like that in a sense because you have all these different political parties these groups and unfortunately i would really blame social media platforms that really <laughs> allows people to think that they have power when in reality they have they have no power to like a voice to spread and there's in today's day and age a lot of people are easily influenced and it's it's really sad the millennials are easily influenced of all the generations right now and it's how weak-minded are you going to be nobody wants to do their own research they it, america is pretty unstable in a sense of our what's the word it starts with a c uh can't think of the word right now but basically how close we are so i would in my honest opinion and it, it sounds like like how can you say that america needs another war and that's going to wake everybody up whether it's taliban whether it's isis whether it's north korea i mean i mean something in africa i believe that we need another war to wake people up to say hey like we're going to start drafting you bastards and see how people react to that because you're going to have the proud boys, not that group necessarily, but proud Americans that are going to say, you know what, like it's time to do something for a greater cause. And it's going to get the focus of what's happening in the world right now. I mean, you look at Afghanistan and it's really sad right now, uh, 20 years and it seems like a big failure. And in my honest opinion, whether people like it or not, we were there and we, we kind of have to figure that out right now. Um, I hope that answers your question, but I think, I think America's just, America's America, man. In 10 years, something else is going to be the next thing, the next gossip. Uh, like, like I said, think back to three years ago, people thought World War III was going to happen. It's yeah. pretty unstable in a sense of we are putting ourselves more into more in debt. All these other countries are thinking they're going to get a reach around from us and certain parties are allowing that because they just want their family's pockets fed and kind of bullshit in my honest opinion that i think we do need a reset but that's going to take some time and you need a lot of willing people for that to happen you know i'll just add on to the social media part there um you talked about you know people don't want to do research and stuff like that it's so true and, and the downside of it is for um you know back in the day someone who did scientific inquiry did actual research and just did individual independent thinking back in the day they were called a scientist today they're called <laughs> a conspiracy theorist it's like, so if you don't believe exactly, and, and I know Mahomes doesn't believe in conspiracies because he believes whatever he sees in front of his TV set as being 100% truth and he can't question it. But um, if you question anything, you do your own actual research, you are chastised online, like big time. You question COVID, you question anything, any narrative. It's just like social media gave that illusion of free independent thinking, discussions and community and all these things. And really what it's done over time is just kind of manipulate people into believing whatever the mainstream narrative is at the time. So yeah. I think we're kind of messed up thought wise in that sense where people are kind of becoming more brainwashed and more zombies by simply being on social media than you'd think it was going to happen. You thought the social media might be more intelligent. People are becoming dumber and dumber. And for a lot of people, you're just not allowed, allowed to question anything. I mean, you just can't fucking question anything or they get offended. <laughs> Yeah, and I, one more follow-up question on that too. Um, in the Marines, in the a government, I guess you can only speak for the Marines. Am I still here? My internet's being a fucking cunt again. Yeah, you sound fine. You're good. You're good. <laughs> uh, anyways, the Marines. Um, that's you know. Are you? Do you think you're in the? In, in, are you privy to? Gone. 
And there goes your internet. <laughs> and there it was. Hey. As soon as he was trying to answer <laughs> the question, folks. Oh, Great shit. question. No, you're hey, back. Hey, uh, you're you're back. Back. <laughs> back. I'm not. I'm not done yet. <laughs> yeah. Do what I do. Ask your question, question again. <laughs> uh, we'll give him a second. Ask your question again. Uh, hopefully, I can get this question out because it's a. Are you? Are you privy in the uh, Marines? Do you, do you feel like you are in the in crowd? Do you is it like Joe Biden is giving you notes in class or whatever, where you know more than the average American citizen? And that's kind of a, a shitty ass uh, question because obviously you know certain things. But I mean, I always look at the military. I'm like, what do they know that I don't know? Is there a ton that you don't know, or can we oh, all okay. figure out? Can we all figure out? You know, can we all find truth on our on our own or? Or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, um, in a sense of what's actually happening in the world, chaos-wise, I definitely know a lot more than you guys, because I have I have brothers that are in Australia and South Korea, in Kabul right now, uh, in Bahrain, uh, all over the world. You know, and a lot our Marines. I have a lot of uh, sailor buddies that actually just deployed. They're out in the middle of nowhere right now. Um, a, a few airmen and soldiers so yeah i would say i chaos wise i do know a lot that's happening before social media even like kind of gets the platform and and it's kind of fucked because you see like a lot of veterans posting because they actually know what's going on in a sense of you look at a good example would be afghanistan people are saying um the taliban are threatening us that we have to pull out by the 31st and if not there's going to be certain action from what i heard it's a little bit different which i'm not really going to talk about it's just because of operational security purposes it's kind of like we hear the information first it somehow gets leaked to let's say an afghani citizen and they report to a news media as a leak and of course uh social media platforms news platforms will try to twist that and make certain things turn severe. And then you see like, oh, uh, ISIS plans on attacking tonight. And it's like, there's not enough information on that. Whereas to me, it's like, hey brothers, what's going on? They're like, hey, we heard around this vicinity, probably at this time, here's the intel. We're gonna go kill these guys or these guys are gonna come. We're just gonna drop a bomb on them. And then people are just gonna think that the terrorists are doing it, but we don't really have to say anything because we're there to pull out Americans. Um, but that's just, all hypothetical. I just want to weigh in really quick, and then I'll shoot the mic uh, to see what his thoughts are. But you talk about ISIS for a second. And I don't know if everybody remembers this, and, but um, I'm a filmmaker. Mike's a filmmaker. I've done a lot of filmmaking. And I'll never forget when those, those videos were released, and it went all over the media of these um, uh, executions or whatever. And I just sat there and watched everyone. I was like, that just doesn't fucking look real. And then I heard they were made in like a British TV studio or something like that. What do you think about those videos years back that were released? Oh, so are you ta you're talking about the the ISIS killing the Christians and all those prisoners? Yes. Yeah. Those are those are real, man. Are they? <laughs> the uh, ones... I don't know which videos you saw, but the ones where they're just holding them, putting them in cages, shooting the back of the head, cutting their heads oh. off, holding them down log. Uh, the one that looked like it was like a TV, it looked like it was like a film where they're out on the beaches and they're lined up on their knees. Were those all real? I haven't seen that video, but, um, in the Marine Corps, you get a lot of different briefs. And one of them was just like, I, I don't remember the name of the class, I had to do something with counterterrorism and what to be aware of, what they wear and the severity of them. Because in the Marine Corps, you get numbed. They, they numb the fuck out of you because... You're, you're supposed to be a fucking killer, you know? I mean, yeah, yeah. we get our name from the Germans in World War II. We're called fucking devil dogs. They were fucking shooting at us in a trench line and we started fucking rushing their asses and killing them all with bayonets. So I would say on that particular one, I'm not sure, but I do know ISIS was doing a lot of that and they were trying to, because they're scare tactics, you know? Yeah. How are people going to react? And the, the best thing I can do with my force is try to scare you. Yeah, we'll have to talk about maybe later, but there were, there were videos that were shot like it was a film production. And then I think the videos you're talking about, I think I've seen those and those are a totally different thing than I think what I'm talking about. But it was just an interesting um, thing or whatever. But uh, yeah, Mike, did you want to weigh in here? And um... Yeah, <clears throat> so, 
Yeah, it's it's good that Fidel is is keeping the security because I know uh, prisons Prison City podcast is fucking huge in Afghanistan. <laughs> so like, you don't want to be leaking anything right now. About to know? be now. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, um, I'm really like Kelly said, I'm really enjoying just just listening uh, right now. But I do have uh, one comment to make on something Mahoney asked earlier um mainly about like you know the president of the united states who he is whatever um you know i remember when biden won and all that shit happened like you all do but i i remember talking to fidel about it and uh you know at that time fidel so he left the marines to go to the mexican u.s mexican border to be a border patrol agent and so that's why Fidel left the Marines is because he he was on assignment at the U.S. border. Like one of his assignments was to be on the border patrol. And so, yeah, man, he's continuing to serve our, our country. But I uh, I wonder, if Fidel, if you can just talk about that, because maybe that'll give people a little bit of perspective of the difference between Trump and Biden, because with Trump, we were ramping up the wall and it was our, our, our border security was strong and it was almost overnight with the Biden administration, like currently you're stuck in New Mexico indefinitely, right? For like another six months, because like, we don't know what the fuck is going on. Like, it, like isn't the border crisis just insane right now under Biden? Yeah, so uh, with that in 2019 of February, we got the call that we were deploying to the Southern American border. And we were, that was actually when, so when Trump was in, we were the first group to go because all the shit that was happening. I got stationed by Imperial Beach. So right over the ocean lines in Southern California to the Mexican border. Um, and I actually saw the wall get built. It was really interesting because at first it was just like a little uh, 12 foot fuck off steel wall. <laughs> like the, the ones that they put on the, the fucking tweaker houses. <laughs> and it was like dude like yeah it was, it was insane it's like what the fuck like i didn't Feels believe it I've never been at the border. <laughs> uh but it was interesting because when i went there we actually saw it get built and they built it pretty fucking fast there are these you guys can look up images it's just these uh they kind of look like a rustic color rusty color of like these huge 25 30 foot steel beams that have like rebar and uh man american construction workers they're fucking fast they're good at their job uh but it, it's from what I seen there when Trump was in, it was slowing down. Um, but it's, 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 it's a long topic to talk about. You have cartels. Cartels are in charge of smugglers groups. Smugglers groups are controlled within each section between 400 to 800 meters apart going from east to west. These different smuggler groups offer different prices to different ethnics, uh, Guatemalans, Nigerians, uh, Egyptians, and they offer you these different prices to smuggle you. Uh, when you get smuggled, the way the laws were working that Trump was trying to stop was if you are not our neighboring uh, country ethnic, so if you're not a Canadian, you're not a Mexican, um, and you come in the country, as soon as your feet touch soil, you only have to say three words and you pretty much can claim asylum and you're free in the fucking country. Um, and those three words are, I am scared. That's it. I am scared. And as soon as that happens, the border patrol agent has to come in. He pretty much, uh, he takes you into the holding facility. They get all this paperwork. They try to see if you are a citizen of which country. And a lot of the times they shred that fucking paperwork. And America, what they do is they try to get in contact with this country and say, hey, do you know this citizen of your country? And they're like, no, we don't know them. So what we have to do is we have to take them in and your tax dollars are going to be paying for their fucking medical, for their court due dates, all this crazy shit. And unfortunately, what was happening was, and Trump stopped it for a very short period of time, I'm pretty damn sure, they get released into America. They get pay fucking papers that say, hey, Mr bitch here's fucking <laughs> 60 days we need you to show up to this court date you're getting released into the country 60 days and show up to this court date 
Now, yeah, Fidel, is, is that called the catch and release? Was that like Obama's yeah. program? Yeah. Okay. And it's it's crazy we're going to the border. Um, it's just, yeah, that happens. They don't show up and they're just hiding in LA and, or other states, but LA is a pretty big fucking city to hide in because they got families there. Um, nothing against people like trying to get in. In my opinion, like America should be, you should be able to come in the country, but in today's day and age, I believe you should come in legally. Unfortunately, America's process to come in legally is slow as shit, but we don't know who the fuck's been coming in. Um, I, it's, it's crazy because these cartel groups want to make money by trafficking you inside, uh, by smuggling you inside. And they don't like, they, they didn't like when we showed up. I'll tell you that. When we were the first groups there and we got fucking posted, it was before the news started posting like, oh, uh, U.S. Marines are by the border. They really weren't happy with it. And some of my buddies, myself, uh, we were getting shot at by the border. And it was, it was like fucking crazy. Um, but with Biden coming in now, I know that is all back in full effect. It's slowing everything down. Um, I'm not going to get deep on it. But right now I'm in New Mexico because certain things are taking longer than they should be. And that's 100 percent definitely because Biden is under control. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say he's the one signing the pencil, but he definitely has people in his party that have a ability to slow things down. And right now, we shouldn't even be focusing on Afghanistan in a sense of that shouldn't be our top priority, as it should, though, because there are Americans there and no man should be left behind as an American. But we should be focusing on ourselves. So, Fidel, I was just going to bring up a point there how um, how sometimes adoption, you say you have two people, and I'm going to compare this to what you're saying, how adoption, two people can't have kids, so they it's so hard to get a kid, you know, months and months of whatever, going through this bullshit, trying to do it legally. Then you have anyone out there, you know, with a high sperm count can knock up whatever chick and doesn't matter where their kid goes. I kind of compare that to people trying to get into this country legally. Like we have an aunt in South Africa trying to get over here. And I don't think she, I don't know if she's completely cleared to move to United States or what their plan is, but it's so hard to get her over here. And like you're saying, people are just doing it left and right. Like who gives a shit, you know? Yeah, man. Unfortunately, it's, it's fucked, dude. It, it really is fucked. I, I wish Trump would have had another four years because we were really making progress with trying to figure out a system on how to properly get everybody in and documented. So I'm, I'm really sorry. You said your aunt? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, man. I hope the best for her. But uh, I know it, that shit could take up to two years when I heard the last I've heard. It was uh, she, they had COVID related stuff, travel restrictions too, that like shut down. Yeah, that's that's true as well. Also, but. I don't know if she actually ever got, I mean, did she, did she become an American? I mean, did we hear that this summer? Which, which we, aunt are we talking about? Robin, talking about Robin. Robin from yeah, uh, okay, that's South right, Africa. That's... Yeah, well, okay, she might be a citizen now, but the point of the matter is she's been trying to do this shit for, you say two years, she's been trying to do this for like fucking forever, like years and years and years. And she might not even be there yet, but um, if she is, it's still taken her since she's been married to my uncle, which is what, 10 fucking years, 15 years, mm -hmm. something crazy. Yeah, man, the border crisis is it's hell and it needs to be fixed soon. And it's really unfortunate how, I mean, what they gave fucking bitch ass Kamala, they gave her the fucking reins and she's. <laughs> That's Mrs. Bitch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. Like, like just because you're minority first female vice president, no, you you have the fucking title, do your fucking job. Yeah, yeah. So, so just one more thing on the border: is it, uh, and maybe you've already answered it, but if you want to go further on it, is it as chaotic as we are hearing as citizens, as civilians, or is that overblown, or is it worse? As of when I got there last, well, I guess a year and a half ago, it wasn't what the news was portraying it as. Now I can't necessarily tell you. I, I know we're still over there marine-wise, so I could probably ask around. But it's not, it was never women and children. Like, I, it was, it's, well, this is really sad. 
the only woman and child I saw at the border, and I was down there for five months, uh, we were on a patrol and there was this, we have, I forget the name of the canal, but there's a canal. We have natural laws in this country with our neighboring countries that allows natural water to flow in, uh, out of the river into the ocean. So Mexico has this huge canal that travels into our country. It's by Imperial Beach. And she was pushing a stroller with a baby in it on this canal. And the canal is completely empty. And we're going up there with an agent and she's talking in Spanish and she's basically saying like, I need to get across. Uh, me and my baby need to get across. And she was completely high. It was, it was insane. And you're not supposed to cross the border, but when you do, you get apprehended, you get detained. And she ended up getting detained. We, the first, our main priority is to make sure the child is okay, because unfortunately the child has no say in it. We go to check the baby and the baby's white as shit. And you look and the baby's dead. The, uh, the, it had like a huge pack of cocaine inside the baby's uh, sternum from its lower section and it was Jesus. sewed on and it's like fucking evil dude and it's that and that's what I saw um, and all my brothers down going down from east to west along the border we didn't see any women and children it was always men and if you did see a woman she was half starved and she was psycho on drugs because she was probably getting raped but she wasn't Mexican. She was probably like an Indian or an Egyptian. And but those are really rare, rare cases. All men, all men. And sadly, that's not the first time we've ever heard a story like that. You know, uh, about a baby just being pumped full of, you know, drugs, dead. You know, I've I've heard that since I was a kid. So I mean, that must happen all the fucking time, unfortunately. Yeah. Um. Here's another one, and um. Uh, you see this sometimes in like TV shows or whatever. So I'm not so much uh, truth there is to this, but um, is are are there people that work down along the border where they go down to Mexico or whatever, and they just find uh, immigrants or whatever that just want to cross in the United States, and they load them up in like big uh, vans or whatever, and take them across, and then they like abuse them or whatever. Does that happen quite often? Or I haven't heard anything about that, but I wouldn't say that's far far fetched at all. I like i'm pretty sure that could easily happen you know i mean we still have smugglers people that are smuggling people illegally mm -hmm. for slavery inside of america um so yeah i, I do think it's possible one i just the, haven't heard anything specific. yeah one, one of the sickest things and it doesn't really happen necessarily at the border but probably does the same night but they'll do these ads uh american they'll do these ads in these foreign newspapers or whatever to come work in american stuff and then you get to america and they just turn them into fucking sex, sex slaves because they don't know the language they don't know what they're doing it's just like really pretty the sex slave market in america is pretty fucked up still it's really bad yeah hey uh fidel do you do you see with social media and now we're in like internet 5.0 you know how there's this oh trump wants to close the borders and then biden wants to let everybody in because the democrat want to import voters right but a lot of this is just theater because obviously there's like way more shit going on with drugs and like cartels and these are like mafia this is like gangster shit right and and so like it's not as simple as just you know you know importing voters so like my question is with social media as we advance in the internet do you see people starting to realize that and just maybe starting to pump the brakes on the oh kids in cages right like remember how they were trying to frame trump for that but it was like those fucking pictures were from the Obama administration. Yeah. And, and, and so like, as the internet goes on, we all kind of know that now. And it's like, at some point are like, do you think that, that people are going to start realizing more truths about the border or is it always going to be Democrats or importing voters and Republicans are heartless and they, they don't, they don't care about women and children. I would say the unfortunate side to this would be in all reality shit's going to stay the same i don't think people are going to really open their eyes people want to see what they want to see and they believe what they want to believe uh, the lefts are pushing for whatever they want and they're getting it and the fucking right they're a bunch of pussies right now and are not doing shit because they want to be comfortable too and and that's just the end of it it's, it's unfortunate so i don't really see americans opening their eyes in a sense you're not going to have the next jesus christ coming in and saying hey this is happening we're going to fucking fix it right now. That's just, it's not going to happen. Yeah. What, um, from your perspective, what 
country do you think is the biggest threat to America right now? Mm. I'd say China. Um, China being that they... They overwhelm us one to 20 uh, troop wise. And you kind of look at China and what they're doing around the world. If you, if you really pay attention closely, they have in control with debt and with certain trade agreements. They, have, they pretty much own 106 other countries, but it's just not really spoken of or like agreed on. But these countries are completely in debt to China and China is giving them the go ahead to do whatever they want and control their government so long as they have a trade agreement and know that they would be agreeing with China. I wouldn't really say to a non-aggression pact, but more in a sense of if shit hits the fan, they're going to be siding with them. They are definitely a big head right now. Yeah. And one thing that I heard, um, I don't know where I saw this at, but um, it was something along the lines where China's never actually physically started a war before, but the game they're playing is way more powerful than actually starting a war. Yeah, they, I, I would, I uh, would not say like the Chinese are smart in a sense of they know how to get what they want without really having to move a finger. They are definitely in towards the long end of the game with whatever that may be. Um, World War Three with force on fours. Um, if we fucking destroyed our world to the end of who has the last bit of resources, um, if all countries go to chaos, who's going to be supremely in charge? You think, I mean, you think about like, I forget the name his name but communism and dictators literally existed all around the world before 1775 and older or younger so all that has been controlled by all these huge dictators and communists and so when we came into the game and started growing in power it was kind of like okay they got their wake-up call in a sense of we need to start getting more capital around the world because this country is a huge belief to other countries and they're going to start sustaining power. And we are, we are still, and I believe will always be the strongest force in the world right now. Fuck yeah, Fidel. And again, you know, thank you for your service. And this is absolutely like, uh, you know, these people that hate America, man, like, you know, just Arnold Schwarzenegger the other day, I mean, you, you guys probably heard this shit, this, uh, Screw your freedoms, you know? Screw your freedoms. <laughs> it's like, fuck you, man. I mean, and dude, like, I mean, I I love Arnold. Everybody does, right? And, it, and it's just like, but like America just made him possible. Like there is no NFL or NBA in fucking Saudi Arabia or Iran. It's like America, what Fidel was just saying, that communism is actually the world norm. I mean, whether it's communism or fascism or, or uh, you know, it's like we are a new country and, and we we absolutely need to protect our freedoms and with this covid regime and i know we don't want to get into that right pat yeah uh, but i mean it's like our freedoms are absolutely being just picked off and what fidel is saying about china and the way they play the long game i mean they they just come in and buy up everything whether it's hollywood or or um you know just california and, you know, a buddy of mine at work thinks that if we ever do have a civil war, it'll basically be China and or Russia that, that comes in and says, OK, well, uh, we will help you with your civil unrest uh, and then we'll just break apart like the Soviet Union and they'll they'll just start buying us up. And that's how they're playing it. And what Fidel's saying is they're absolutely concerned about this freedom thing this you know and they they play the long game and it's a very generational thing and they they've been sitting back for hundreds of years now going hmm yeah like let's let's uh let's get in this capitalism game let's 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 try to you know buy them out and and yeah man and and this is you know we're, we're just in such an amplified time in in world history you know yeah mike and actually right there um i want to jump in and go towards more of what's happening in afghanistan right now so from what you're saying you look at america and other countries look at america and so long as they aren't the heavy communist countries everybody love, loves americans um they love what we stand for you have us like uh oh you're from new york i hate californians like you have like the inside 
like we all hate each other, but we all we all bleed red, white, and blue. Um, whenever America goes somewhere, there is stability. Stability in a sense of you look at these terrorist states. When the Americans show up, everybody calms down because they know what's fucking going on. Right now, what's happening with Joe Biden? Fucking Obama did the same goddamn shit. Excuse me. Um, he, he's announcing that we're going to be pulling out around this time. We're going to be pulling out around that time. We're going to be doing this. We're going to be doing that. You don't need to be saying that to the world. Um, and you look, you look how easily it happened with Obama when they were, he was saying, we're going to be striking these terrorists at this time. And it was all over the world. All the Americans heard it. You don't think they heard it? Every single, to an extent, because you got to think that there's poor people out there. Every single Afghani has access to Twitter, has access to Facebook. We think like just because they're in the middle of nowhere in the Middle East of the desert doesn't mean they're not civilized. They have access to all this. So right now, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Uh, the Taliban, they did that whole threat of if we're not gone by the 31st, something's going to happen. They're going to start attacking the airport. I mean, fucking, uh, if, I was, if I was the commander in chief, and I think Trump did a good job at this because he wasn't necessarily a politician, but he was an American and he wanted to get shit done. And I give him credit to that in a sense of go ahead and try, bitch, because if you fucking do, you're going to get met with the horns. And right now, we think, I don't know why Biden really, really does this, man. I mean, we talk about conspiracies. He could be in control or totally not in control. He could be doped up all these meds. There could be a higher force really in charge, but who are we to really, we're all going to speculate. Um, he's just fucking bending over backwards for them, you know? And it's ridiculous because uh, we don't negotiate with terrorists. And just because one president said that does not mean it just, it's just his beliefs. American, we don't negotiate with terrorists, you know? You think of the thousands of brothers and sisters that died in Afghanistan. It's like, what, they died for no reason? No, oh, fuck that. Like, these guys believe Sharia law, and that law states that if you don't have our beliefs, you're an infidel and we're going to kill you. And because the mass majority, not all, are Christians, and the Constitution was based off of Christian beliefs, you're against them so they want to fucking kill us they don't like that what we're doing in the country they don't like that we have a chance to bring sovereign peace to the afghanis uh to the iranis to the iraqis they don't want that um so of course there's going to be attacks of course there's going to be terrorist attacks but whenever we show up somewhere all that shit slows down you're not going to have complete chaos when they found out we were fucking leaving they ramped up the attacks. They ramped up everything. They were going way more at it. Uh, and it's it's pretty unfortunate because, I mean, it's, it's, it's a huge mess right now. I do and I don't blame Biden because it was inevitable. One of the presidents was going to get this fucking weight on his shoulders and he was going to have to react. The way we pulled out was a big no-no. I could promise you if you gave it to a fucking PFC, right, a private first class, someone that's been in the military or the Marine Corps for fucking six months, you could say, hey, based off the knowledge we taught you on tactics, and it's a bare minimum because you've only been in for six months, how would you take out these Americans from this country? And what would you do right? We have, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to quote it, but we have different exco plans. We train for all this stuff. If we wanted to, and this is how you know America is the best and powerful. If we wanted to, we could have those 10 to 15,000 Americans out within mere hours, hours, not days, not weeks, hours. And it's, it's a huge thing. You think of uh, the French, the Germans, the, the UK, they're all out there right now trying to pull out and they're pulling them out in slow waves. And it's uh, not a lot's getting fucking done. Uh, so it's, it's ridiculous because we can, we have the capabilities. We can, we can go anywhere in the world if we wanted to. We could send a whole platoon to the middle of Russia and there's no fucking way they would find out that we were there. And we wouldn't know because the people don't need to be told that shit. There's a bunch of stuff that doesn't happen in the news that you guys know about. And it's just, it's ridiculous because we can easily pull out if we wanted to, it's just, we're not gonna. And I, I don't know if it's because we don't wanna reveal our Trump card in a sense that we know how to do a proper exfil, but it's like, what the fuck do we train for? Um, 
I don't know, man. We have so much capabilities that even in your worst nightmare, you couldn't even imagine because you haven't seen it yet. Um, so, but will Biden show the world our capabilities? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, see, that's do. the thing too. It's like you people people looked at Trump, and it's ridiculous. People looked at Trump as if he was a dictator because he continued the air campaigns from 2016 to 20. 19 like i remember going in infantry school and uh every time we'd go to lunch i think fox news would be playing and we'd just be seeing our fucking jets just bombing the fuck out of them dude and every other day we would see like the reports the forces were getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller their controls and it's like dude our air force alone could decimate them but of course taliban hide amongst the citizens the people so you need to put ground troops on there and oh man and the whole fucking situation right now with us giving them the fucking all those supplies. I don't know if I blame us or if I blame the Afghanis because, man. Now, does does some of that seem like warmongering though? Because it's like we we give them all the shit and then we leave and then the Taliban takes over and then we're just gonna have to go right back in and start another war, right? Yeah, man. So, hypoth technically. In all technicality, technicalities, we did not give the Taliban the weapons. We gave the ANA, the Afghan National Army, we gave them the weapons and the complete training that we were completely capable of. So they could have been just as good as us, maybe like a class B or, yeah, I'd probably say a class B to our class S ranks. I would say they gave it up and they gave it up because they're spineless. They have family members that are in Taliban. If I'm if I'm the ANA and I'm getting trained from the Americans, you're a different race than me. You have a different belief than me. Fucking Haji Bob John is my cousin. He's in the Taliban. I know he's not going to kill me, but he's going to kill you because you're training me. I'm going to go join him because I'm more scared that he's going to want to kill all of us because I'm hanging out with you. And it's true, like a lot of the ANA defected into the Taliban when we're leaving right now. This is happening as we speak. It's fucking daytime over there. Um, so yeah, we gave it to the ANA and the AN, ANA were a bunch of pussies. They dropped their guns and they fled. We gave them the, the biggest fucking, uh, I forget the name of the, the base that we had, but when we pulled out of that base, we gave it to the ANA. They didn't even fight for it. They just gave it up. So it's like, if you're playing a fucking video game and you go to your buddy who's completely stacked and you're brand new and he's like, Hey buddy, you can take all this. I'm fucking out. As a matter of fact, you can lead. It's all you, man. And it's like, what the fuck dude? Like, and it's just, it's ridiculous, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, we technically didn't do it, but of course there's American serial numbers on there. So we did, we did fund it in a sense of who paid the bill, you know? And I, so, I think that's kind of an interesting point that you talked about, because obviously America's catching the heat because whatever, we were obviously the most over there, but, and we're America, you know, <laughs> we always get the headlines, but I yeah. do think it's interesting that like the Afghan army, and it's not like, and you can speak way more to this than I could. It's not like we were the only outside country in Afghanistan. Uh, you know, I'm not sure to what extent the British forces were there. I know you mentioned the French. It's not like we're the only ones like, I guess at fault for whatever the fuck's going on over there. Yeah, it's true. And how much do you feel like uh, I've heard also that, that the Afghan, uh, you're kind of literating it anyways, just talking that um, we, it would have been nicer if they stepped up a lot more to actually fight their own battles and shit over there, especially after we give them all the trains and the weapons to do so. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, look, dude, you, uh, you look back to the beginning of times, this, these countries all in the Middle East have been at war with each other for religion, for all their beliefs. And it's, in my belief, it's going to be like this from the beginning of the days to the end of the days. They will never find peace. Uh, Israel made peace with, uh, fuck, Pakistan? I think Pakistan. They said they weren't going to bomb each other, and then fucking a week later, they're bombing each other again. It's, it's ridiculous. Nice. <laughs> so it's, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's never going to stop, which is why we should and shouldn't pull out because i mean the middle east has rare minerals that countries can benefit off of they say china's going in right now um we could have been great friends with them but unfortunately they are the corrupt family that doesn't get along 
that leaves each other at the end of the night that doesn't like try to come back together and go through this shit they're all fucking against each other and when we're in it we're the enemy so it's 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 just it's a clusterfuck man and it's always going to be like that whether we're there whether we're not there whether all of the eu is there um it's just when we pull out completely who's going to go in and who are they going to work with because uh, terrorists they fucking love communism you know they love the communists the dictators because they will in state them which is what they want um to be a country to be a force to be reckoned with um and i think they're moving more on towards that because they know they have all these fucking weapons now these these air these gunships and stuff that there's no fucking way that they can control and if they do they're all gonna fall out of the fucking sky um i don't know man it, it, <laughs> reckoned with and it's, it's ridiculous it's, hey what know. what do you say to the people out there that say we are not the world police do you, is there justification to that? If we just said, fuck you and concentrated on our own country, uh, of course the world would probably fall apart in a lot of ways, but will we ever be threatened by that? Or do you think we have to be the world police? Um, I mean, is it more for their benefit or the entire world's benefit to keep safe? What do you just, what do you say to that? You know, I've never really thought about that one, but I do think, and I will say that if America pulls out of a lot of places, not just in troops, and forces, but with certain deals, um, trade agreements, X, Y, and Z, I do think a lot of other countries would suffer immensely to the point to where it would be Venezuela, um, where their, their government's failing them, people are starving, currency doesn't work. Um, so I think America is this huge this arm, this, this, like this huge bicep, it can do everything, you know, it'll, it'll hold everything together. It doesn't fatigue. Uh, like you fucking, you think of the Terminator's fucking bicep or fucking predator Schwarzenegger before he fucking became a faggot. Screw your freedom. Screw your freedom. Yeah. G-rated, G-rated show folks. No, no. <laughs> Shit. Excuse me. You swore <laughs> I think if we pulled out, then a lot of countries would suffer. Are we sustainable on our own? Fuck yeah, we are. We don't need anybody, dude. Uh, we don't. It's just because of our beliefs and our ideologies of home of the free, land of the brave, land of the free, home of the brave. I'm tired. Um, we kind of like, we, we spit that out as a, we're preaching to the world, you know? Because you, so, you got to think, think too, because uh, all these countries, I mean, I bet not all of you guys are full bred american british you know what i'm talking about like like i'm spaniard american well, there's irish americans and all these different ethnicities coming to america make this great country because we all have these beliefs you know and it's a good thing it's just i think that if we were to pull out of everything the world would go to fucking shit and a lot of groups would unveil and these terrorist groups would start taking control of certain countries and it's like what would we do we would just go right back out again so here's a question is just basically like Joe Blow American post like post 9-11. Obviously, that was like as close as our country had been in a long time. Right. Um, and so the thought for me always was, OK, like this is capture, kill bin Laden and then we're done. Like get the fuck out of there. We don't need to be over there anymore. And so I guess that's my question, because you you understand it way more than I do. Like, do you felt like once we killed bin Laden, we should have like that should have been it or we were too ingrained and we didn't want them to like get overrun by a communist state i guess like what's in your opinion did you, did you think it was like okay we got bin laden like this is done we're on to the next thing here's a good example you know uh did you guys see the videos of the cabal airport where a lot of the citizens were hanging on to the c-17 yeah yep, yep. as it was leaving you think of as soon as america transplants itself into any part of the world Everybody's going to jump on that equipment, uh, that thing, because they want, they want access. They want the benefits, whatever it comes with. And while we were there, I can't name off the top of my head. We had a bunch of uh, non-aggression packs. We had agreements. We were talking to all these uh, uh, viceroys and uh, I forget the names that they use, but basically they're higher ups and say, hey, we're going to make these deals because we're here. Um, we know you need help in this. What else do you guys need help with? With Because that's what America does. We uh, Marines, uh, they train not only to kill people, but for humanitarian aid. 
um, when stuff shit hits the fan, when uh, tsunamis, tornadoes affect like the the Caribbean islands, more towards that. We're we're the first ones there. Our ships are nearby. We're gonna go rescue people and help people because it's what we do. So because Gaddafi was there, we're talking about Bin Laden. Or Gadda- Wait, who are we talking about? Sorry, yeah, Bin Laden. Bin Laden. Bin Laden. Yeah. So because Bin Laden was there and the whole effect that he was doing, I mean, his people were starving. Um, he'd be killing people just for fun, you know? We kind of jumped in there more towards how are we going to help the country out too? Because the people are, are being legitimately oppressed, not like today where everybody thinks they're fucking oppressed because they didn't get an extra espresso shot in a Starbucks. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. It's, That's pretty true. It's like, Yeah. <laughs> I worry about that though. The that uh, well, yeah, no, it, it's actually it's actually interesting. Like, because then if you look back to even like post World War II, Germany was split into different factions, and we stayed there to kind of try and help stabilize the rebuild of that, you know, that country in there. So it's actually a good point. It's just one of those things. I think like me, average American, um, is like, all right, we got the guy. Like, what the fuck are we still doing there? Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's, 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 and that's the thing too. I mean, Americans are like, well, why are we still there? You know, when we killed them, why are we still here? And it's, it's, the politicians do a shit show of a job to explain why we're still there or what we're even still doing there. And don't get me wrong, Americans are greedy too, but not to a sense of, I'm going to risk your life. Hmm, don't quote me on that. Hold on. I'm, I'm not going to risk your life for my life um, to get what I want. It's kind of like, I have so much power, I can do what I want in a friendly way, you know? So did you, growing up, you know, you talk about video games a lot. Did you ever play the game Civilization? Civilization 2? Yeah, dude, I fucking, I think I played Civilization 3 and that was the first Civ game I've ever played. And I was fucking hooked, dude. And I was like 12 years old. I actually have Civ 6 on my phone right now. And I play that shit every night. Yeah, that's, that game is fucking so addictive, so awesome. And everything that you say, you know, when you're talking about the bicep of the world, that kind of reminds me of um, that game, you know. You go in there and you're not necessarily, I, I guess you're, yeah, trying to take over everyone else. But I mean, if it's, <laughs> yeah. if, if it's in the name of freedom, though, you're working your ass off, and then they're taking your village, then you're taking it back. And it just seems like until the world is 100% completely at peace, just like that game, you constantly have a mission to do. You constantly have to hold you know, a grasp. You have to hold on to that end of the tug of war. And it just reminds me of that game so fucking much from what you just said. Yeah, it, it definitely does in a sense. I wish they would put in a game mode to where you could have, say, eight to 12 settlers, and then you'd start your own, like, obviously, your city state or your cities. And then you would have to manage them more than trying to conquer others. But I'm pretty sure there's other video games for that. Um, but yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I can get yeah. more on that. I can get more on that. I mean, China thinks that they're doing that right now. Like, oh, we could conquer the whole world if we wanted to. And because we own everything, we're going to have world peace. That's, in a real <laughs> reality, it, it couldn't happen, you know, because different different ideologies and beliefs and everybody would have to get on the same train and believe it, you know? Yeah. And you're constantly moving Marines into your cities. You're constantly moving in your battleships, anything to protect those cities. It just feels like the way the world is where... Yeah, uh, we got to do this constantly, but guess what? You know, there, there is more world peace because yes. of that, you know? So what you, yeah, what you, just going off what you're saying, basically in that game, and I think is how a lot of, or at least some people in this country think like, you're either the attacker or you're the attack E. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. In America, you, you know, you've been talking about it all night as America, we feel like, oh shit, there's nothing that we need no problem that we can't solve because we are America, you know. And you're, you're constantly attacking people, but once you get a hold of those cities, you're constantly defending those cities too, and which is what it sounds like America. And you're doing. pleasing them and making sure that everyone's happy or at least Everyone's trying. got money and food. Yeah, you're exactly right. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the, in the new Civ 6, uh, one of the best strategies is to boycott Patrick Cutler. 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, you can leverage off of that. <laughs> no, I, I, I wasn't aware of that shirt tonight. I totally forgot. We got to get the corporal of shirts. That's your yes. uh, going away prize. For Absolutely. Being on the podcast. We got to get that. Uh, we got to get that boycott. I got, going. I got, the, uh, <laughs> got one right here for you. I'll send you oh, one for shit. the Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, it, hey it's, man, if I ever come on the show again, I'll wear it. Yeah. You got two floating around LA. If you get one. <laughs> yeah. You should send it. Send it to your Marines in Afghanistan, and then Patrick can be fucking worldwide. That would be. <laughs> That would no, be so actually, funny to see yeah, him like, about that in a one. different country. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll bring it up uh, on their downtime. Maybe they'd watch. Hey. Yeah. Hey, you know, I one have those, a... Uh, I... Go, ahead. go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say, one of those uh, that stole the Black Hawk helicopters. Wouldn't that be funny? They're wearing a boycott that colored t-shirt. <laughs> 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 we are fucking wanna... pissed off at this fucking Patrick Cutler. <laughs> I, Who want is this I want those t-shirts to be like turned into the team that loses the Super Bowl when they go to like some. He is Patrick Cutler, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't, if you don't know uh, that that goes into the whole uh, people being offended in the press on online posts and stuff is where that stems from and oh well, I've had a little too much fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Adele, uh, one thing you were saying though, just just the last twenty minutes of, of you talking, as fucked up as everything is and nation building, you know, it it kind of makes me feel a little bit better almost because i'm thinking that maybe we do have the best of intentions like maybe we are actually trying to do the right thing but then of course it gets all fucked up and, and humans are, are just flawed by nature and and we we obviously you know it's just a winds up being a disaster especially with nation building but you know it's like maybe the world isn't completely evil where America's just trying to dominate everybody and take everything over. You know, I think that there are a lot of good intentions and like what Kelly was saying or what Mark was saying about, well, we, we killed the guy, we got the guy. So, you know, why don't we leave? And it's like, well, because this is and this, and it just, it just seems like there are good intentions there, right? Like the road to hell is paved with good intentions, I guess. But, you know, so it, it, it gives me a little bit, more sense of humanity just talking to people who actually know what's going on versus just the media or from pat and i the conspiracy shit which is really crazy you know but i don't know i mean do you have any thoughts on that uh, as far as like maybe good intentions go gone wrong uh, i mean america's always gonna have the best intentions on how to help people I mean, I, I brought up humanitarian aid and how we have the wealth to share in a sense of if you need help, we're going to help you. Um, I do believe that. I do believe that, you know, um, I just also believe that after every four years, we have a president. And I think it's a little ridiculous at this point. It's either one party or the other is going to progress or slow the country down and the rest of the world is going to get affected by it. And when it gets affected by it, we are getting ultimately more affected by it because it's either we're going to a simple example would be go more into debt or we're going to start making progress on to make deals that would be making us a lot more money so yeah oh, wow i'd say most people on facebook right now who argue whatever with afghanistan and biden and politics and all that shit and I don't argue any of that shit because I don't like to get into it, but they probably don't even know where the hell Afghanistan is. And that is me included. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you, think, you, you think of Afghanistan as a bunch of uh, tents out in the middle of the desert, but I think a lot of small minded people, especially from the prison city here in Deer Lodge, have <laughs> no fucking clue how big the world actually is. You know? <laughs> hey uh where's where's afghanistan 
So <laughs> it's it's in between. It's so it, I'd say it's directly in the center of the Middle East, uh, to the northwest, northwest of its Turkey, to the southwest of its Iran. Uh, I can't tell you the rest. Uh, to the south right or the the southeast is the United Arab Emirates, and then I think. I forget what's the East, but I definitely know those three for sure. Oh, nice. Well, the only reason I'm bringing that up is because we were on a, uh, like I was saying, people, uh, what, what you said earlier, people on Facebook have such a big uh, bicep where I think they're so powerful. But we were flying out to Milwaukee, and they had a quiz on there. Most Americans don't know these simple questions. They had a picture of America, and they said, what state is this? They had a blank, uh, state blanked out. Me, I could not fucking figure it out. What the fuck state would it turn out is Nebraska? So that's, a weird that's one. how that, yeah, that was like my, I guess, my two cents on people being all powerful on social media and all that shit. I don't know how I got off on that shit. Yeah, it's definitely pretty sad, man. Everybody thinks they know it all because they got a damn phone and access to the internet. But when push comes to shove, like that is an example, it's like, oh, I don't fucking know what state that is. Uh, Texas. It's- fucking mississippi it's like what that's nebraska is the loser state sounds like a loser state <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a weird one because uh, you look at uh that area because the states don't look they look pretty similar nebraska would be kind of a weird one to get just looking at it like that's yeah. where like montana idaho washington california california the, the is basically just a picture of a huge vagina so that's pretty one easy to get <laughs> so hey pat i actually have a question for you um what is your thoughts like your personal thoughts on the the cabal airport right now and um i mean shit us pulling out now i i i mean i i haven't followed it, it, it completely um it's it's I've, I've seen a lot of fucked up shit happen there or whatever but um i don't know after listening to this entire this podcast before and hearing and everything you had to say and everything I've been, I've been, my life in most of uh, the last 10 years or whatever, I've been more of a pacifist where I just don't really believe in, in, in a lot of the wars we're in or whatnot, kind of like Mike, but um, now you can kind of see, I want you to understand how important it is to hold these points, these embassies, embassies and these different strategic locations, um, kind of becomes clear, you know, that you should really think, I, I have to go back to your point of uh, politicians just doing a really fucking shitty job of explaining why we're in these places. Because, like, you listen to a politician and they can't fucking explain why they're in there. And they, and this problem with politics, I would say in America in general, because it's slogans and they do this thing uh, and they say why Trump is so good as a politician. Because if you can break your words down to where like a third grader could understand it, whoever can do that the best is going to win the election. So they never actually explain anything as substance. And um, I would say that's where I probably get a little bit misguided in a lot of things. But yeah, I don't know. it's it's crazy. The, the the situation there in Cabal is really fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So- I think it's it, it's really interesting too, like how um, you know, well, first of all, we're approaching the twentieth anniversary of nine eleven, right? And so there's a lot of talk about well, they wanted to do this on the twentieth anniversary of nine eleven. And, you know, and what are we going to do if there's another fucking terrorist attack, right? Like, I mean, because that that's just going to mean instant war, right? So it's like, you know, whatever happens is in the future. I mean, you know, uh, but it's something's going to happen. And it's just really interesting to see the media turning on Joe Biden, right? Because like the media was just like, you know, once Trump was out and Biden was in, it was just like a light switch of like, just even the the press questions like we've all seen this where it's just no hardball questions just like you know it's just completely uh they're all pro biden but now there's all these polls that are saying that biden's approval rating is like uh there was like only 52 percent or whatever and and it's just it's just really interesting um that they're like, are they really starting to realize that, you know, 
like is the media gonna gonna turn on this or not i mean i think so many questions i've seen this so many times in the past though you wait you wait till you get closer to 2024 and watch the media suddenly flip the switch the other direction now all of a sudden uh biden's the uh, greatest president the last 20 years or whatever so i think the media is like oh we got some time to actually tell the truth about what's going on and then we get closer to the election nope no more telling the truth about anything <laughs> well and speaking of the media like 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 social media how tell me this how the fuck can the Taliban have social media accounts, but the 45th president of the United States can't? Like, they fucking kicked the president off of the fucking social media, but the Taliban can have re- registered accounts? Like, can you talk about that, Fidel? Because they're fucking communicating with each other on, on fucking Twitter and shit. Like, yeah, you know, man, actually, I was thinking about that last night. Um, it's ridiculous because this is how you know, and this is how you know, like, in conspiracies is all these thoughts that are made up to something that it could be possible and uh, all the facts are lining up and it, it could make sense, but we don't have a fact. Um, so I would say this would go more towards it, but also in a sense of these, these Twitter guys, they're, like, they're definitely all paid off. Um, and it's ridiculous because if I'm who, who, who uh, invented Twitter, was it an so, American? So the, the backstory, Jack Dorsey. yeah, I, I follow the backstory just a little bit. Jack Dorsey invented just, he's kind of found, I like Jack Dorsey better than Mark Zuckerberg on six. I think Jack, Dorsey believes in Bitcoin. He's a very legit guy. The problem is you need capital, uh, venture capitalists to fund these things before you know you're, you're answering to a board. So basically what happened was Jack Dorsey has to answer to this fucking Twitter board. The board basically said, you got to kick off number 45 off his account. That's basically what happened. Yeah, yeah and that's funny because I was going to go there in a sense of you have all these guys that are in charge and they have the big say-so. And it's like when someone's filling up their pockets, it just it doesn't make sense to me because it's like, terrorist oppression does not exist so why the fuck are we allowing them to put their platform on there is it because we want communication with the terrorists understand how we could uh exploit them or is it because we want to hear all these threats death to america and because we don't want to affect us and it's, it's ridiculous um but yeah it's it's stupid like take off the president because he's oppressing americans when americans really aren't oppressed they just need to fucking wake up or man it's just it's just it's stupid I, I think i think that's a good point though to make is if you have like terrorist type groups on twitter or whatever and say i don't know what the hell they're trying to follow but they're way fucking easier for the u.s government to track if they're doing it out there in the open than if they're doing these encrypted other apps they can use yeah i mean yeah. we definitely have the capabilities to track any phone and everything we do a lot of airstrikes based off of phone tracking um it's like hey we got intel that this is this guy's phone and uh this guy wrote down the numbers on the back of the phone and they just traced this call it turns out he's at this fucking weapons depot we use the satellite what are we gonna do all right well here's the brief boys we're getting a mission in the next uh zero six hours we're gonna go drop a bomb on this fucking depot so, yeah i mean i guess it could be to good use i just don't know if fucking twitter is one of them that's used Fidel, uh, did didn't you tell me that some Taliban terrorists have been texting you to try to, like, like get you to fuck? Like, what? Can you explain what? Yeah. What so I mean, this actually started. It happened pretty much once I became a Marine. You know, I mean, I, and I think I, I kind of call myself out when I put like on my social media platforms that I'm a Marine, but I have everything private in the sense of that nobody can message me unless I approve it, and that's on all my platforms. Um, but yeah, I mean, every now, I would be getting it a lot a couple years ago, but it started ramping up actually most recently, and I think it's because I've been posting about it, so you know how there's the algorithms when you post, uh, you put the hashtags, it comes up on other accounts, other people can see it. But yeah, I've just been getting a lot of uh, requests and, or follower requests and message requests, and it's basically just saying like, um, death to America, or fuck you American, um, or... So they're so they're trying to get you to turn on your country because you're yeah like, it's just it's it's ridiculous I mean they because I mean we we all agree and understand that they they have complete access to the internet they can access anything and I just get all these fall requests and like these broken English like uh, come come fight me come to Afghanistan come to Iran we, you want you want to mess with us we or die christian or you should text him back you should text him boycott patrick cutler and see what he fucking <laughs> says dude 
I don't know, man. They might YouTube his ass and look at him. They might see my fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about uh, what about and going again on the social media stuff? Uh, you remember ISIS? Uh, they recruited people off of fucking Twitter and shit. They had two yeah. two girls, two young girls, smoking fucking hot. Went over and fought with ISIS, and they ended up getting killed or whatever. <laughs> But they're super fucking hot. That was all I wanted to say. <laughs> oh shit! I didn't think about this. Is gonna be on YouTube, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey Taliban, if you're watching this, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you Taliban. <laughs> well, fuck goat, you're about to get fucking bombed, you dumb bitch cunt. <laughs> fuck Taliban. Hey. Fuck ISIS too. Hey Fidel, this is G-rated. Just to remind you again. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I want to I want to launch a question. I know Mahone's wanted to ask all night. Did we actually land on the moon? Oh shit. <laughs> Dude, I don't even know, man. I mean, I hear I hear my wife talk about it, I hear Mike talk about it. I think we did. I don't think we would bullshit that, you know? I mean, you think like it was this whole space race. Why would we lie about going to the moon, you know? I mean, they you guys say, I mean, Mike and Megan have said like, oh, these conspiracies, that we don't have the technology to go there now with the fucking stuff we did 10 years ago. I mean, like, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure we did. You guys look at all the fucking shit that's like the technology of fucking Elon's space shuttles that are going up and down. I mean, I, I do think we did, you know? Why would we lie about that? Uh, I, I, I think my, my perspective is, and I'm just questioning it. Um, I, I think the, there's a lot of stuff with the first moon landing that you can really look at as being pretty questionable at the time. But I, my perspective is I, I do think we eventually got to the moon. I just don't know if it was that very first one. Because um, I would say, and, and we're going we're gonna to do a whole episode on this actually eventually, but with Elon Musk <laughs> trying to... <laughs> I don't know if I'm just interested in that. <laughs> With Elon Musk trying to get the Mars, it's like, would he get the? Would he be able to do that if we haven't at least landed on the moon? So I don't know. I think it's interesting to talk about, um, and we're gonna have a big episode of that come up. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of left yes, on that. We um, are we are having a, a a detailed episode coming up, filmed in high definition, and uh, but you know, like, hey, we can't even pull out of the fucking Afghanistan, you know, in 2021. Yeah. We're playing golf on the fucking moon, right? Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, oh, hey, I'm not, gonna say, not, gonna say not entirely this. sure how those two things relate to each other, but uh, <laughs> sure, I, I follow your logic. Sure, sure. I would say there, there's a big difference between uh, man's success as, as an evolving with going to Mars and politicians improperly fucking busting their load and jizzing all over Afghanistan the wrong way, you know? Uh, but yeah, I'd be cool to, I'd be so down to hear about this high definition thing you guys are talking oh, about. You're, oh, you're going to hear about it for sure. So oh, right. no, apparently you've never seen The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just the, joking, man. No, I actually, I know, I haven't seen, it's a scary movie, right? I haven't seen it. No, it's about the moon landing 100%. <laughs> oh, I say... Watch the doc circle the wagons. I was gonna say, watch the documentary. <laughs> There's Mahoney. There's Mahoney. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, welcome back, man. Where did you go? Yeah. <laughs> uh, my phone's uh, my phone's dying. Actually, I've been I've been here the whole time. You know, uh, you look like uh, you look like one of my Marines. His name is Robinette. You look like your face looks exactly like him, man. When I saw you, I was like, is that fucking Robinette? <laughs> <laughs> must be a good looking guy. Yeah, he is. He actually <laughs> fucking does TikTok. He's like a bodybuilder, dude. He has like all the pictures on him. Yeah. I just got on TikTok. I, I, I must just look like him by the face because I'm not a fucking bodybuilder. <laughs> <laughs> you were into CrossFit for a while, weren't you, Mahoney? Not, no, never, never. <laughs> what, are, what about I TikTok, say, Mahoney? Mahoney? I don't have TikTok. Your football yet. career, Mahoney. We yeah. had a, an amazing football career. Uh, amazing is a stretch. I was <laughs> better than average for where I was. <laughs> Fuck yeah, American sport, right? Oh yeah. We, I'll tell you what. That Afghan Afghanistan wanted to line up and play eleven on eleven football. We would beat the <laughs> fuck out of them. Fuck yeah, we would. <laughs> fuck yeah, we would. See now we're we're joking, but why don't we do shit like that? I mean, why why not? Like, why not just just say, hey man, like this is what we're gonna do, and I don't know. Let's Twitter is just gonna fucking 
ban all all Twitter in all of Afghanistan just for like two years and let's let's fucking have them play football and let's let's have them fucking <laughs> you know then we play their fucking sport like we throw rocks at each other right oh my god I mean I don't know I mean that that'd be something I don't know if it'd get fucking country peace but I mean, I think it's possible. <laughs> what, what about Afghan versus US golf tournament on the moon oh fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think the alien. I think the aliens would win that one. Well, I don't know, Patrick. Uh, you know, we already know that they can, like, you know, go to the moon and stick the landing on the first try. So we know that they they could easily get up there, and you know, and there's no advantage to being up on the moon. By the way, uh, why haven't we gone back? Why haven't we put any fucking buildings up there? You know, I don't know. Oh, hey, hey Mike, Mike, I'll be right back. <laughs> Mike, I w- I watched a video today on Facebook where. They threw a car off this building and built the trampoline and the trampoline actually lifted the car up and the trampoline didn't break. And that was the goal of the video. So now I think anything's possible. I think we landed on the moon. <laughs> hey, I can't, I can't question what, what you watch on the internet. Matt, you know what I'm saying? So is this, but is that this just like, is this what this podcast is? Is like, is that what the fuck we are? Are we just the, if, if it's not an episode about COVID, it's an episode about the fucking moon landing, or then somehow we'll work both in. Like, is that what we're going to fucking do? I want to hey. see Esteban. I want to see, if he's in New Mexico, I want to ask him about aliens. Oh, yeah. Roswell. Hey, wait, when Fidel comes back, you, you that should show him that picture of Esteban. <laughs> Say that you, that you found a, uh, like a, like an, a real legal alien crossing... Hey, orders. Mike, speaking of Esteban, uh, Pat and I and Matt went up there the other night, you know, for the Red Gate movie again. Yeah. We, we circle the wagons all the way back to episode one. Uh, we went up there for the Red Gate film. And uh, yeah, that's just, I mean, I know you've been up in the woods in Deer Lodge, around Deer Lodge. This is just a fucking, that's a creepy, creepy place, especially when you're thinking about Esteban the whole time. And Pat's going up there. I might go with them, depending on, on what's going on later this week. But he's going up there Thursday to fetch the Esteban camera, the second camera that uh, we set up specifically for the film. So that's going to be interesting to see if they caught anything, because I don't know if you know this, but the tree that the camera was on the first time, they took us up there two weeks after going up there, Pat and Jim Tilly, which Jim Tilly's here, by the way, he's got to make an appearance here shortly, but uh, they went up there and that entire tree was, was knocked down two weeks after they were up there. And the, the Esteban video was, or, or picture was 2018. So I'm just saying, weird fucking occurrences. I'm excited to see what's on the Esteban camera round yeah, two. Yeah, I, I am too. And I actually just talked to a, a sidekick, like a clairvoyant. I, I made a movie in 2019 about some hauntings. Oh, yeah. um, you know, and uh, I don't know. Did you watch that, Kelly? I sent it to Pat. Yeah, I'll send I it, to you. it was pretty interesting, uh, yeah. Yeah, but that, she's a real you know she's amazing like she has you know she she can feel energy and i i so i i sent her that picture of esteban and she was and really really interested and she wanted to just know all these details like how how big it was or how you know and so i sent her the don bromley podcast of you guys and uh um so yeah my i i think what i the next step is i'm going to have her talk with pat on the phone because she actually can talk to a person like like Don Bromley or or Pat and 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 pick up, you know, just whatever she picks up, right? And I think it would be super interesting to have her or somebody like her go out there, right? Maybe we could put some money together and like fly her out to Montana and just fucking have her like there and just see what happens, you know? Oh, shit, money yeah. together how how many shirts do you think we've sold on boycott <laughs> <laughs> here say hi tilly jim tilly our special guest oh, uh, host next week <laughs> oh geez what's he doing tilly. he All hasn't right. made an appearance since the uh hey mark thanks for your mother's jam episode <laughs> <laughs> what an episode what an episode that's when we almost died man this show so, almost fucking died <laughs> so i'm not even kidding mike freeze and we talked this about last or whatever podcast go deer lodge could be an alien town like roswell yeah, yeah. like oh, area shit. 51 <laughs> just sucking all that tourist money for stupid 
boycott Pat Cutler shirts with stupid <laughs> Esteban on the front of them. People paid 20, 30 bucks for that shit. Hey, you know, now now that I see Fidel wearing this badass hat, uh, you know, oh. my, my cousin Megan, I've always wanted her to come to Deer Lodge. We should bring fucking Fidel and, and Megan out there and we'll have a fucking Marine with us and let's just like stay the night out there with Esteban. <laughs> like, did you... Uh, consider what are you guys that, trying to do are you guys trying to go hunting dude you know what i will sh- i i will tell you the whole story of esteban fidel or maybe pat should tell you but this is some crazy shit man there's a lot of paranormal shit around deer lodge and bigfoot. uh yeah go ahead bigfoot Oh, check this check this photo out this is an alien well this is off a hunting camera that uh a friend of ours had set up and it takes three photos really quick. So this is yeah. the first photo. The second two photos was black. It was moving so fast. So it's like it's can't be an animal. It, it's just really I'll show you the photo. It's really fucking weird. They never were never able to explain exactly what this thing is. I believe Bigfoot's real, man. I, one of my Marines, uh, he was my roommate. He told me. Oh, let me see. What the fuck? It looks weird. It's it's and again, it's moving so fast. The other two automatic shots didn't catch anything. It was just black. You know, it's yeah. actually it's pretty humanoid. It's it's really interesting. And that's a trail yeah. cam, and it and it and it. I think Don Bromley. So he's like a hunting outfitter guy, and he said that these things take bursts of three. And he says that even with fast moving animals, you always get at least two frames. And this is just one fucking frame, and the other two frames were were dead. And and I guess his camera was fried afterwards, right? And, and yeah. like a bunch of weird <clears throat> shit. And, um, and, and if you really look at it, it's like, there, there's just something off about it. Like it, it just doesn't look like it's because, you know, watch the Don Bromley episode. He's not, he's not a fucking, like, I, I would not say that he's like a graphics designer or any kind of a Photoshop wizard or, you know, I it mean, looks like the Tesla robot, right? It's something, man. And, uh, it's just it's just really interesting because Patrick can tell you a little more about that Redgate area because this is not the first weird thing that's happened there. And Pat's making a movie about it. Yeah, in the process it's of called Redgate. Movie. Yeah, it's called so there's an area outside our town. It's called uh, Redgate, um, and uh, there's a lot of weird, spooky shit out there. People getting killed and all these things, alien sightings, just a bunch of bizarre shit. So I've been doing an investigation in this whole uh area and it's just the more stuff i've investigated i've done this whole film about it and it's going to be released here uh sometime here in the fall but the more shit i've investigated the more bizarre shit has happened so i came across that alien photo all kinds of weird stories of stuff that happened up there but it's just really spooky shit it it goes from paranormal to just like ghost type shit it's really fucking bizarre you know if you guys want i mean we can make a part two and we'll go out there with guns blazing and We'll call all the monsters and we'll, I mean, we'll kill them, you know? Dude, I'd be fucking down for that. <laughs> Boy, that's a dark ending. You want to kill them? Yeah, yeah, fuck it, dude. I mean, that's the one's done nothing. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Kind of racist, huh? <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> oh, Mike, it costs, I can get an online psychic here that will do a reading with me for 125 bucks for an hour. Oh, shit. You are, yeah, okay. Should, should I book her and just talk about Red Gate? Well, maybe you time? should, and then we'll have Jules come on, and then because, uh, you know, she's like really intense, but I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. oh shit. Hell yeah. What the fuck is going on there? Well, <laughs> see, this is the weird shit. We're talking about Esteban. Esteban. We're talking about, yeah. And we got Jimmy Tilly hanging around, like lurking right next to Kelly somewhere. <laughs> I've never so really I, <clears throat> I live close to Roswell. I've never actually put thought into it. Like the extraterrestrial beings, you know? Yeah. I want to um, know, Mahoney, you don't, you, you know, you, uh, we don't believe in the moon landing, but we believe in aliens a thousand percent. Does that uh, boggle your mind? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it's whatever, you know, whatever, whatever uh, takes all kinds, man. Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> hey, Fidel, what's your, uh, you said you got a buddy or something that has a Bigfoot story or something? 
Yeah, so um, I'm probably going to butcher the story, but he's told me it a couple of times when we were drunk. Um, so the, he's originally from Oregon. I forget the name of the city. It's a small town. Um, this was before, like months before he became joined the Marine Corps. Um, long story short, he was with his brother and two of his buddies, and they decided they were going to go camping and hunting. Um, I forget what they were hunting. Um, I think it was just small game, but I mean, you know, the fucking like Oregon, their trees are just insane. Their forests are insane. So I guess the first night they got there, they decided they were going to hike around two miles out away from the trucks just so they get to the campground. <clears throat> they pretty much went off the trail into the middle of nowhere. They brought their guns out and they decided they were going to pitch their tents and they were just going to relax for the rest of the night. So they did that, you know, and as it was getting dark, the sun was setting. It obviously becomes more darker inside the forest when the sun sets. So you don't get to see the sun uh, set. Uh, they were saying that they kept, it, it's pretty, pretty normal to hear a bear out there from what he's told me. Um, and he said that they were just like eating their dinner, like cup of noodles and all that shit. And they said they he heard the most bizarre. He's he's an older man. He's like older, and it's in a sense of not too many men are above twenty in the Marine Corps when they joined. He was like twenty five, um, and he said he heard like this perverted, scary noise, like like a gorilla and a bear mix. Like I can't even mimic it. And he said that as soon as they heard it, it sounded like it was about like nine hundred meters away, so a pretty far distance where you would barely hear it like like echoing off the trees and he says he said that and they didn't really think anything other like maybe an animal was getting killed and about like five minutes later they were eating their food and it sounded like it was getting closer and they were it was getting louder you know and it sounded like there was multiple like maybe one or two or two or three and at that point he said it was like around like 400 meters out so pretty close pretty close you know when you when you're living in the middle of nowhere with all the trees around you could tell the distance of how far an animal's out um and he was saying him and his brother were like oh fuck dude it's probably a bear man and then uh his, his older brother um was like dude bears don't sound like that but it did sound big so they're like well fuck it like tonight we're just gonna sleep either back to back or one's gonna be taking the shift uh one of the friends was a bitch and he's like dude i don't want to be up alone we're all gonna stay up tonight um so they did that and not even uh, 10 minutes later after the conversation, they said they heard it louder, louder, and it was getting closer. And the sun was getting darker and darker. And they're like, holy fuck, dude, like, like we got to get the fuck out of here. But the, I guess you never, I mean, it makes sense. You never try to leave your campsite at night to go back to your car, especially when you're two miles out because you get fucking lost. It's not worth it um so they all have guns and they're like well fuck it if something comes by we'll just shoot it you know animals are scared of fire and they said like i'd say about an hour later they could hear something heavy running through the tree line like fast and they're like what the fuck is that so they all got back to back they started shooting warning shots you know they had like their shotguns and they were like scared and they said like they would they, it's there was complete silence because you know when you're in a forest you literally can't hear anything except for whatever's moving around you, wind, uh, squirrels, all that kind of shit. And they said they just felt like something run and abruptly stopped. And it, it's dark at this point. And they said they couldn't see anything. And they said they just felt something like looking at them. And I was like, I remember when he was telling the story, it was so surreal. I was like, dude, there's no way, you know? But he's not a liar. Like, I've never known this guy to lie, not once. And he said, like, his brother was like, you know when you get like sleep paralysis when you have those nightmares when you just can't fucking move mm, he said yeah. his brother was like that he was just standing like this with his was was his weapon at his side and he just couldn't move i forget his brother's name but he was calling to him and he's like hey hey and the brother was just looking directly in that darkness he was just like fucking like he shit himself like legit shit himself he was so scared um he's like what is it so what my brother did um brother in arms he said he just raised his rifle up to look and he said it was just close enough to where the fire would make a glint in its eyes. And he said he saw its face and he said it was standing and it, it looked like it was tall as a grizzly bear. But he said from what he was making out, it didn't have a snout. It had like a, it had like a man facial features. And I was like, what the fuck, dude? And he said, as soon as that happened, um, 
they heard yelling like like the same beast or whatever it is from behind them and it sounded like it was running towards them and it was yelling so his other buddy started shooting in the distance and it got quiet and he said as soon as he looked up he just saw like this big humanoid beast just walk away and then they were just like screaming as it was as they were leaving and they didn't sleep all night when the park rangers came uh, they went to, as soon as day broke out, they just left all their fucking gear and they told the park rangers, uh, they wrote a report. Um, and yeah, he didn't, he didn't go from there, but he just said like, whatever it was, it wasn't a fucking bear, but it was definitely as big as one. And I, I believe him, you know, cause I've heard other, uh, stories about Bigfoot being in Oregon and I don't know. I don't even know how we got to this rent, but yeah. And, uh, and you, you said that was your brother in arms. So that means he was a trained Marine. So this Be, that was before he joined the Marine Corps. Oh. So this is just when he was telling me the story in it. His brother actually was a soldier. He was in the army. He was on leave. But his brother was fucking scared. You know, the soldier shit his pants. It's like, what kind of fucking thing will do that to a man? Make him not move, you know? Has to be a bear. But he said it didn't look like a bear and he's looking at it. Crazy. That's fucking crazy as hell. Yeah, so I'm oh, saying, let's go out there, man. Let's go hunting these monsters. Let's go. <laughs> Fearless, dude. Yeah, well, you know, there there was a certain film called Enigma that <laughs> I, I think we, we should teach you about. Hold on, I got uh, some. Oh, shit, I'm actually with some of the stars here. Uh, <laughs> wow. I, I want to do an episode where we, like, I got to figure it out. We just sit here and we just watch Enigma. But it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's stuck on the Enigma screen or whatever in the Nick audio, and it just gets our, our comments as we watch it. <laughs> Matt, Matt Freeze asked to be invited to that episode. Yeah. Hey, oh, geez, yeah. If we find it, if we find this monster, we'll cut his head off with this K bar. <laughs> <laughs> you guys will all get one. Esteban, you hear that shit? Esteban. Yeah, this, this is the Marine Corps uh, knife of choice right here. Boom. Hey. It's a Tanto blade. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. Oh, nice. Hey, Mike, maybe Esteban came back to. The United States on the uh, craft that went to the moon and landed there. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean it makes sense because the craft that went to the moon was, uh, I think, one eighth inch, you know, thick <laughs> pen. Um, yeah, pretty amazing <laughs> how how they fucking stuck the landing on the first time. It's unbelievable. <laughs> they stuck the landing. <laughs> hey, you know Hollywood can do some amazing things, Mike. <laughs> Hey, by the way, I'm saying all of this out of admiration. Like, like you know, it's like it's well done, boys. I mean, hey. it's, it's it's fantastic. Hey, yeah. Mahons, I'm a fan. Hollywood you know? could fake the moon landing, but it couldn't save Enigma. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, sure couldn't. <laughs> all right, I think we're gonna round the horses here. <laughs> round them chickens up. All right, uh, let, uh, wait, give Matt a second here. But yeah, Mike, I just called, or I didn't call. I just call, I'm going to contact a psychic as soon as I get off of here. I got one lined up online from a site that I use for different things. Are you Are you going to call one of those fucking 900 numbers? No, this one's <laughs> online. It's it's from a legit site that I use for a, a bunch of different things, and I, I, it's the money it takes is very small. So I'm just going to write her just this long paragraph for her, and then supposedly she has really good ratings. So supposedly she'll come back with me, and I'll I'll just uh, share what she comes back with because it's. She has really, really good ratings. Like everyone says, like she she tells stuff that actually fucking comes true and stuff. So I'm gonna write to her about Red Gate, about the alien stuff, and let her know what I'm doing and stuff, and just say, so what else am I missing to finish this film? I don't know if I want to know the answer to that at this point, but <laughs> so so she's a cheap psychic. So you're getting her on yeah, Witch.com. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually it's a really reputable site, and they have like a lot. A, a worldwide reach it's pornhub.com perhaps you've heard of them <laughs> it's pornpsychic.com <laughs> uh, uh all right let's let's round the horses so uh matt i'll go with you first on your final statement on tonight's episode oh good good because that was my last beer so good thing um i don't even know we were drinking tonight <laughs> yeah <laughs> always <laughs> um so yeah i guess a lot of good things um said and like a lot of good information i heard tonight from uh fidel our guest here which i think this is a really cool episode and i actually was just telling the bigfoot story to someone over there so 
Um, that was the only thing on my mind. And now, like I've said before, I'm probably going to Google Google Bigfoot and stay up till two in the morning, uh, <laughs> rounding them horses. <laughs> All right, Kelly. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for coming on. It's a very interesting episode, and it's a very nice uh, perspective to have someone that was actually, you know, in the Marines and things. So, uh, you know, you have uh, credibility in that realm of the world, and that's that's really interesting. And I just want to say, you said you were going to send us all one of those knives. Well, instead of that, can you send me some of the acid your friends were are that saw the, uh, the Bigfoot thing <laughs> happen? <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll look into that, man. I'll look into that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like good shit, man. <laughs> Dude, they had to be tripping on multiple things, man. Crossfading, man. Mushrooms, LSD, acid, the whole nine. <laughs> uh, uh, Mike, your final thoughts? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, brother. Thanks, Fidel. Uh, early on in the episode, you were trying to think of a C word. Um, I think that the word was camaraderie, what you were talking about, how, uh, you know, Americans come together always. Uh, we might take 10 years off. We might, I mean, it was mentioned earlier tonight, 9-11. That was probably the last time that we were just so close together and American flags and people were really, really feeling it. And, and we all want that again. And it sucks that maybe a fucking it's going to take some more bullshit or more wars or whatever. And, you know, and, uh, you know, if you wouldn't have got out of the Marines to go join the border patrol, you might be in Afghanistan right now, you know? And, and so, you know, it's, there's, there's a lot of people like you in our, in our country and all over the world that, that fight for the allied forces and, uh, and yeah, so, I feel good talking to people like, like you and, 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 you know, just speaking personally, you know, you always raise my game a little bit more and um, yeah, hopefully you can come back on and, you know, maybe we can do a real, real drinking episode where we get a, get drunk with a Marine, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I wasn't drinking. I think 50% of people might've been drinking on here. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to Mahone's final words here. I just want to say, Mahone's, uh, this week was, um, you missed the end of last week's podcast. We were actually going to talk about uh, <laughs> women's, the power of a woman's vagina was going to be <laughs> this week's conversation. <laughs> but of course, uh, when we got such better stuff, we, we switched it up. But next week, we will be talking about um, a lot of stuff like that. Sex, Pornhub.com. I'm not even fucking joking. That is the next episode. <laughs> All right, shit. So like, whatever on. you... T- Whatever you tell me, I don't think it's a joke. Um, uh, but thanks. I'll, I'll echo what everybody else said. Thanks for coming on here. It's, I wish more people like you that actually had the experience had the platform to talk instead of the blowhards who are in people's pockets and who no one really trusts or you know don't actually know what the fuck they're talking about. Um, so it's really good to have that perspective, especially because I've, I've tried to unplug from it. I want to like, I kind of want to read it some of, some about it, but then I was like, I mean, you know, way more than I would, cause you have that real world experience. So again, thanks for everything you've done. Thanks for coming on here. Um, and I'll leave it to Pat to try and land this on his first try. <laughs> hey, no, yeah. So yeah. Uh, but I'm going to give you the uh, final word here tonight and you can end the show for us here tonight, but yeah, thanks again for coming on and, and we appreciate everything you do and uh, uh, go ahead with your, your final statement of the night. Okay, sweet. Hey, Patrick. Hey, brother. I really appreciate uh, the invitation and uh, Michael for encouraging me to this. Uh, when I first thought of it, I was like, man, I don't know what I'm going to say, you know, but you know, you guys are, you guys are a hell of a group and I'd definitely be excited to talk to you guys more. I mean, fucking, even go on Bigfoot or something. But yeah, uh, I just want to leave it with this. Uh, one of my brothers said, and you guys might know him, Tim Kennedy. Um, he's done oh, yeah. everything. Oh yeah. Um, he said, we have the most powerful military that's ever been a part of the species. And that's the U.S. American military. That is U.S. Americans that say, hey, I want to serve my country and what I can do for the country. And it's never going to be, what can the country get for me? But what can I do for the country? And right now, I have brothers over there right now, and I know their sisters over there, um, and they're doing that. You know, they're awake right now, and they're trying to 
get as many Americans as we possibly can and shit's getting done and you guys can sleep well knowing that we are the best country in the world, you know? And I'm so grateful because we get to be on a platform like this and have the freedom of that. And for that, I raise my glass to you, brother, and I thank you for it.